Okay, so let me just give you a quick example of a methodical approach. Yeah, so this is what I would do. So once you've identified your stronger areas, this is what you should be doing um, to save time. So um, what I mean by methodical approach is, first of all, you want to think about the overall strategy first. See, what most students do is when they see a question is they just start working things out. So they see this question here and they think, okay, angles, okay, let me try and find some missing angles and they just, you know, they just dive straight in, but that's not what you want to do. What you want to do is you just want to read the question and just spend a minute or two, just think about what information have they given you and then, you know, how, what, what are we looking for exactly? That's very important as well. What are we looking for in particular? And then, what is the step-by-step -step approach? I mean, what you can almost do, you can almost answer the math question in your head. This is what I tend to do with most of my math questions. I can actually answer it almost in my head. Like I know exactly what I'm going to do step-by-step -step before I actually put the calculations down on the page. So, um, this, I mean, this is where most students go wrong is they don't actually think about the overall approach. They just dive straight in. And then what kind of happens is they kind of get lost or they go off track and then they kind of hit a brick wall and then, and then it's, then it's pretty much over. You kind of think, oh, damn, you know, I'm, I'm lost here. What do I do? Shall I restart this question or should I move on um, and then come back to it later? So you definitely just want to spare a minute or two just to think about the overall strategy. So, I mean, just by looking at this question, you know it's going to involve angles and geometry. And you can see there at the bottom, um, okay, here's my cursor. You can see here it says work out the size of the angle marked X. Um, so we're looking for that. And what is also very important to do is you want to work backwards as well so you want to start reverse engineering start focusing on the ends because this this can really help as well when answering a lot of mass questions if you think about the end result um, you can actually go work backwards and you can think about the step just prior to that and then think about the step prior to that one so like for example if you look at here we're looking for angle x um, if i can find this angle here which is actually a b e in angle notation that's that angle there if I, can, if I can find that, then it's just basically 180 degrees minus this angle. Then I'm thinking, okay, how would I find this angle here? To find this angle here, if I can find these two angles, so this angle here and this angle here, we've got angles in a triangle. So you see, we're starting to get somewhere now. We're thinking, okay, um, you know what? I need to find these angles in a triangle. If I can find this angle here and this other angle, then obviously I can use angles in a triangle to find that one. And then we've got angles on a straight line. So, uh, that's why sometimes it's best to actually start at the end as well. So start at the end result and then work backwards. Okay, this is what I mean by um, methodical approach. So what I'm doing here is I'm not actually writing any of the calculations down, but I'm just thinking of, I'm trying to work it out in my head. So I'm trying to think, okay, how do I work out these missing angles now? So um, if you just go back one. Um, so here I can see that, okay, this is, this is going to be an opposite angle here because we've got 70 here. This angle here, this is going to be opposite angle because um, when two lines cross, the two opposites so we know that's going to be 70 and um, this angle here is actually an example of z angles because um, these two are actually parallel uh, de and ab are parallel um, so this angle here in the corner eab is going to be the same as that one there which is 54 um, so we can quite quickly find uh, this angle up here and this angle down here and then we can find the missing angles well. i mean once we have these two here uh, that one the opposite angle and then the z angle that is just angles in the triangle and then you just do 180 minus that and then you do 180 uh, minus uh, that angle there to give you the answer so what i've done there is i've just showed you step by step uh, what that answer is so i haven't actually answered it in full guys can you see how i've not actually answered it in full but i've just kind of i've kind of whisked through i've just gone through the the overall method yeah, so this is what this is the kind of approach you want to be using as well so once you start identifying those stronger areas because there's going to be areas where they're like second nature to you. You look at it and you think, like this, for example, for most of you, um, because this is more of a foundation tier question, probably towards the end of the foundation tier paper, probably a grade four slash five. Um, you know, this this is a, a probably a straightforward question for most of you. So with this kind of question, I mean, you will get that stage as well, guys. You will get to a stage, guys, where a lot of these questions are going to be very straightforward. And then for that, you can just use my methodical approach.